So let me tell you all a little secret, right? You want to know why these fake Christian leaders have you in a cycle of sin? Why they've lied to you about um, repenting of sin being the path to Christ? I'm about to tell you why. The reason why they've done that is because by you living in a cycle of sin, you are committing the most blasphemous, unforgivable sin. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why it's the most unforgivable sin is that you are rejecting Jesus Christ's death. You are rejecting the Holy Spirit. You are saying that Jesus Christ dying for your sins was not enough. That you must become a judge of sins to get other bad sinners to repent. Don't you realize that? When you are in this sin cycle, you are rejecting your savior. You're saying Jesus Christ is not your savior because Jesus died for all sins to save humanity from all sins. And it means exactly that. And that's a mass of 2.38 billion Satan has in his clutches because they believed a fake doctrine. They become judge and jury for their fellow man, condemning others for sin when everybody is a sinner. It's like a shirtless man going out into the streets telling everyone to wear a shirt. You're a sinner telling everyone they're a sinner. Oh, please spare me the hypocrisy. I mean, like for real, like please stop with the hypocrisy. You are rejecting Yeshua HaMashiach as your savior every time you're in the sin cycle. Anytime you go out in the street saying, look at that sinner, look at that sinner, telling everybody they're a sinner. And you really think that's the path to Christ? If you don't wake up, let me tell you something. There are people that do no sin, but have the most callous hearts. And then there are some people that live in pure sin, but have the most pure hearts. You are here on earth right now for the purification of your heart. And that means being like Christ. And what is being like Christ? Loving your fellow man through it all. What did I tell y'all before? Christ didn't go up to people asking, yo, what sin did you do before he healed them? He just healed them. Yo, Christians, it's time to wake up. They've been lying to you all this time. Sin is not the problem. Jesus died for it. Yeshua died for it. It's the purification of your heart. Will you live in Christ as he died for you? And now let me get into how Judaism and Christianity is in fact the same thing. Another big secret is that as practicing Christians, you don't realize you're literally practicing Judaism. You are stuck in the Old Testament and don't even realize you have been taught to believe that Christ is your savior. Yet you reject him by the blasphemous sin of rejecting the Holy Spirit, which means he died for all sins. But without even knowing, without your knowledge, you are a practicing Jew. You are practicing Judaism. With a different name and a different twist, but it's the same exact thing. Because you're living in a cycle of sin, which was the Old Testament. <laughs> when Jesus died for it, and which is the New Testament. You're rejecting Jesus Christ. <laughs> you would never thought that, right? You thought you were just a great sinner on your path to Christ. You accepted Christ, but did you really? So Christianity isn't even the most popular religion in the world. It's Judaism. <laughs> just twisted and formed and twisted in all these different versions. So now that we have acknowledged that part, then it comes to what exactly are the Jews doing? Because to reject God, according to the Bible, is to reject his son. And you guys are rejecting his son by saying that you only believe that there's one God and you're only worshiping the Old Testament because of a promise he made to you. The thing is this, if you reject his son, you reject God. So if they're doing all these ritual practices, who is it going to? Because if you reject his son, you reject God. God ain't listening. You rejected his son. So who are they actually worshiping? Where are the Jews getting all of this favor from? These leaders in the almost every industry and society, who are they getting this favor from? Because God is not listening. They rejected their son. And by that same very re rhetoric, they rejected God. And Christians... You're rejecting his son too by staying in cycle. So you're rejecting God. So these prayers that you're saying, you pray for people's sins. Who are you praying to? Because God is not listening. If you reject his son, you reject God. 
When Christians say Jesus is God, they are saying something that doesn't, hasn't happened yet. This is why the marriage supper of the lamb has to happen first. Because after the marriage supper of the lamb happens, the king becomes Lord and his wife is queen. Now, can you imagine why they would want to stop the marriage supper of the lamb so much? Was it only just to martyr all these souls, these poor innocent souls? No, it was to stop Christ from becoming God because Christ is not God right now. He's still the slain lamb. But when he gets married, he becomes a lion, a lion. I am lion, Zion. Da, 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 da. This is why it's called Marriage Supper of the Lamb. He's still the Lamb. And this is how Judaism and Christianity is the same thing. It's the stuck in a cycle of the Old Testament. You think you believe in the New Testament, but you've rejected it by staying in your cycle of sin. Boom. And Christianity also promotes the hatred of women. I hope you guys know that Christianity is covert patriarchy. It is covert mis uh, misogyny. It's the hatred of women. Don't y'all see that? First and foremost, when they talk about the wickedness of Eve and how woman caused man to fall, they are removing the influence of Satan. You don't realize that, but they are. They are putting the sin as if Satan wasn't the cause of the sin. <laughs> so removing, kind of like making the satan invisible again because remember the greatest thing is to make it seem like satan satan does not exist and they do that when they make women seem like they're these terrible creatures meaning these viperous creatures who are here to take down men when they were actually put here to be part with man it's anti-love they make desire seem like it's a bad thing when Christ actually desires his human one woman bride more than anything. Which is why they've twisted the Song of Solomon. So that you didn't know that Christ loves women so much. This is, let me tell you how much he loves women. The bride of Christ has been on earth not knowing that she was the bride of Christ. Meaning, free to live however she deemed fit. Regardless of if she sinned or not. The bride of Christ is preordained, but she didn't know she was the bride of Christ. So she's been on earth committing all kinds of sins. <laughs> you don't know that. But the purity is not about the sin. The purity is about the heart. And she has been here on this earth with a pure heart the entire time. They tell women, women should be quiet and meek. Yet the woman that Christ loves, the bride of Christ... Is not afraid to speak out. The Shulamite in the Song of Solomon. You need to understand her character a little bit too. She's brazen. She does things that a typical woman wouldn't do. She goes out into the street at night, especially at that time, to go search for her beloved. Then she gets beat by the watchmen. That is the type of woman that the Bride of Christ is. Christianity would make you believe that a woman's place is only within the house. But imagine a woman taking on the place of a leader. Side by side with her man, not behind. That is what it means with the rib. Side by side. The answers are literally right there. And it's hilarious to me to see people judging the, 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 the bride of Christ. Basically saying that she must be pure because of sin. When actually they're rejecting the Holy Spirit by saying that because it's about the purity of the heart. And the bride of Christ has the, one of the purest hearts on this earth right now. <laughs>